It is with great pleasure and honor that I get to introduce to you to the joint convention our Supreme Court Justice Mark Cady. Please give him a very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, distinguished members of this joint General Assembly, Governor Branstead, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, state officials, my colleagues, family, friends, and all Iowans. The assembly of the leadership of our three branches of government in this magnificent chamber underscores the value and the success of our shared form of government. It joins with the promise of a new year and stirs deep respect and reverence for the responsibilities that we fulfill together on behalf of all the people of Iowa. The three branches of government may work in very different ways, but we collectively work as one for the benefit of every Iowan. My job today as Chief Justice is to inform you and to inform all Iowans of the condition of Iowa's judicial branch. The judicial branch is accountable to do its work in ways so that Iowans can see the value of its fair and impartial courts. And it is accountable as well every day for the resources it is, it is given and the important responsibilities with it it has been entrusted. We best meet these obligations by becoming the best court system we can be. And I am honored, I am honored this morning to report on the progress the judicial branch has made towards becoming the best court system in the nation and the value of this progress to all Iowans. My grandfathers, both of my grandfathers were carpenters. Like others who build with their hands, they could look back at their work at the end of the day and see progress from the beginning of the day. Building Iowa's court system consistent with its goals may not reveal progress at the end of the day as easily as the work of a carpenter. It is a long, careful process that requires the hands of many working every day. But certain days do come along when progress can be seen and our goals are closer within reach. Again this year, the goals of the judicial branch are to protect Iowa's children, provide for full-time access to justice, operate an efficient, full-service court system, provide faster and less costly resolution of legal disputes, be open and transparent, and finally, provide fair and impartial justice for all. Let me share with you, let me share with you some days of this past year when the progress towards achieving these goals could be seen with the clarity of a carpenter at the end of the day. Two days last year stand out to best describe our progress in protecting our children. One day in July, I visited with each juvenile court officer in the Iowa City District Office. These skilled and devoted professionals shared stories of progress children are making under their supervision. Stories told with an enthusiasm that promises greater successes for more children. 
you remember, just a few years ago, the stories were told of caseloads that were so high that our juvenile court officers did not even have time to meet face-to-face with most first-time offenders. With your support and with the implementation of our risk assessment and evidence-based practices, we are truly making a difference. Since 2012, the number of juveniles with criminal complaints filed against them in this state has dropped by 2,896, a 20% decrease. During the same time, the number of juveniles charged with felony crimes has dropped in this state by 331, a 20% decrease. And today, today there are 10% fewer young adults entering the adult correctional system. These statistics, these statistics demonstrate real progress. Now, our juvenile court officers have the time to give troubled children the specialized services they need while holding them accountable for their actions. Now, our communities are safer. Now, children avoid a criminal record, a criminal record that too often impedes their future education, future employment, and other opportunities necessary for success as a young adult. Now, now, this state has given its children a better opportunity for a better future. In a different but equally powerful way, progress was, was, was revealed on a day last September when I just happened to run into Tom Southard, who was the chief juvenile court officer in the second judicial district. I casually asked him how things were going, and he paused to give me a most profound response. Drawing on the full measure of his 32 years of service, he expressed his belief that we are providing the best services to children and families ever. His words, those words captured what I had seen in Iowa City two months earlier. They captured the value of helping our children in need and the true value to this state of those who commit their careers to help its children. Juvenile court officers are just one component of our positive interactions with Iowa children and and families. Every day, judges decide cases regarding child welfare, adoption, and family reunification. Our Children's Justice Initiative, chaired by Justice Brent Apple of Ackworth, collaborates with the Department of Human Services, the Department of Education, attorneys, judges, service providers, and other stakeholders to find the best ways to serve Iowa's children and families. This work is essential to the progress of protecting our children, and we continue to develop new data-driven approaches for our judges to use to benefit more and more families across this state. Overall, overall, these coordinated efforts give our courts the best opportunities for progress in protecting Iowa's children. Last year, again with your support, we expanded family treatment courts into every district in this state. We now operate 14 family treatment courts and we will continue to add these courts as more and more families need them. As you may recall, last year, I shared with you a story of a single mother of two children who had recently graduated from a family treatment court in Sioux City. And I read a letter that her teenage son wrote to her that expressed 
just how proud he was of her for keeping the family together by overcoming her addictions and putting her life in order with the help of the family treatment court team. After recalling the struggles that he faced before his mother entered family treatment court, he wrote this. You have become the mom I have always wanted. I love that you are devoted and willing to change to become the sober, loving, and caring mother you are today. Well, in November, I followed up on this family, and I am pleased to report that the mother remains committed to her sobriety, maintains stable employment, and recently purchased a car. that the younger sister is is thriving in kindergarten and the courageous teenager, the courageous teenager that inspired, inspired all of us with his powerful letter to his mother, he, he is earning A's and B's in his high school. While this story could not be more compelling and meaningful, there are many, many more stories of success from across this state that could be told this morning. And there are even more yet to unfold. But that day in September, or excuse me, November, that day was the day that could not have better told all of us how family treatment courts do change lives for the better. One family, one parent, one child at a time. We are also committed to transforming our broader civil litigation system to better meet the needs of litigants and lawyers. Two years ago, Justice Edward Mansfield of Des Moines was appointed to chair a committee to study reforms to discovery procedures in civil litigation and the feasibility of a special docket to process civil claims in less time and at less expense to all the parties. Twelve days ago, on January 2nd, a new era in civil litigation in Iowa began. We now have new court rules that should help reduce the time and expense associated with discovery in all civil cases. But we also have a new expedited track for civil lawsuits of $75,000 or less that will enable them to be completed from start to finish within one year. While January 2nd was just our start, that was the day when the judicial branch launched a new model of judicial efficiency to give more Iowans more access to justice. Three additional reforms to our civil justice system are underway to improve the delivery of justice to Iowans. First, our business court is in its second year of a three-year pilot project and continues to show promise. Justice Darrell Heck of Sloan has been instrumental in developing and monitoring this project. As a part of the effort to improve our business court, in April, I met with Secretary of Agriculture Bill Northey and a group of ag leaders to discuss new and emerging issues that business courts should be prepared to tackle. We are committed to integrating special expertise into our court system to better meet the needs of court users. Second, we are convening a commission of experts to review existing guardianship and conservatorship laws and procedures. The goal is to develop improvements and new safeguards for the services provided to adults and children who need help making decisions regarding their personal care, safety, and finances. 
Right now, our court system oversees more than 22,000 active guardianship and conservatorship cases. Each person in each case deserves the best possible care. The project is under the leadership of Justice Bruce Zager of Waterloo, and the task force will include faculty from Iowa's two outstanding law schools. Finally, we are assembling a task force chaired by Justice Thomas Waterman of Davenport to make recommendations for, the, for greater consistency, efficiency, and transparency in the resolution of family law cases. These cases are a big portion of our workload, and now is the time to make sure Iowa's court system provides the best possible practices and outcomes for families who need our courts during difficult times. These three projects reflect our efforts to improve the legal system in areas that are important to Iowa. They build on our practice of resolving problems with civility and fairness and our practice of listening to the needs and the expectations of Iowans. We know we must be willing to listen, measure twice, and try new approaches to provide the best services possible for all Iowans. Together, these projects make today. Make today when the judicial branch can assure all Iowans that we have been listening and we will continue to listen as we build the best court system in the nation. Let me turn to the area of criminal law. As I mentioned last year, the criminal justice system in Iowa and across the nation is marked by racial disparities. There is an over-representation of African Americans and other minorities in the criminal justice system, from arrest to incarceration. For example, in Iowa, Iowa incarcerates 9.4% of its adult African American males, which is third highest in the nation. This is a difficult problem, but its complexity must not deter us from finding a solution. This past year, the judicial branch began to take steps to better understand and better address the persistence of racial disparities. Let me tell you about two days that best describe the steps we have taken and the commitment of this branch of government to combat the problem. The first day was in July when I met in Iowa City with Judge Deborah Minot, school officials, members of the police department, and community leaders. They are finding new ways to address racial disparities in the Johnson County juvenile justice system by reducing the number of juvenile complaints in a fair way that holds youth accountable without compromising community safety. The racial disparity in Johnson County is found in this statistic. 10% of all youth living in Johnson County are African American, but African American youth make up 54% of the Johnson County school arrests. With training and resources from Georgetown University, the Iowa City community is seeking to reduce racial disparities and its consequences by implementing pilot projects to reduce school referrals to juvenile court and divert low-risk teenagers into community supervision to avoid formal charges. 
This data-driven approach has invigorated the schools, the police department, juvenile judges, juvenile court staff, and community providers with a promise, with the promise of all that can be achieved by its success. It separates teenagers who just need more time to grow up from those that need more intensive services, giving both a better opportunity. <laughs> the collaborative effort uh, began in August, and we will all await uh, the results of its first year of operation. The second day was in November when I attended a judicial training session with more than 100 judges where representatives of the NAACP presented data on racial disparities in the criminal justice system and its impact on our society. It is through training such as this that we gather information and begin to discover ways to bring the promise of equal justice to everyone. The training the judicial branch provides to all staff, including new judges and new magistrates, will now include education on recognizing implicit biases that may often contribute to the disparities. We will continue. We will continue this training and will continue to work with others to do what we can to eliminate racial disparity in our criminal justice system. Iowa, Iowa may be a leader in the nation in the statistics showing racial disparity in its criminal justice system. But these two days last year are days that show that Iowa can also lead the nation in finding solutions to end racial disparities. Let me turn to uh, the day last year that best describes our progress in providing Iowans with an efficient, full-service court system that utilizes technology to its greatest advantage. During the last four years, we have been building and implementing a completely paperless court system known as EDMS. December 4th was the day when the four millionth legal document was electronically filed with our courts. We now have more than a million electronically filed cases. And December 4th was also the day when I was informed that EDMS will be operational in all 99 counties by June 30th of this year, six months ahead of schedule. Iowa, Iowa will be the first court system in the nation to have a totally electronic, paperless process for all cases at all levels. Justice uh, David Wiggins of West Des Moines and appellate clerk Donna Humpel have been instrumental in implementing the appellate EDMS process and bringing the appellate courts into the 21st century today. Today, all the cases of an appellate judge are contained in a six inch by nine inch tablet. My speech is on here too. But... <laughs> looking back, looking back, truly transformational events have come along infrequently in our history. And this age of technology will most certainly be one of them. But we have only scratched the surface. For example, we are now looking to integrate mobile technology into our court system that will simplify access to court information for jurors, 
judges, attorneys, and, and all Iowans. So December 4th did not just signal an end of a project, but a beginning. The beginning of a new era filled with new transformational innovations that will improve the delivery of justice, even justice itself. While some days can be used to mark milestones of progress, other days may deliver problems, even tragedy. One such day was September 9th, when there was a shooting at the Jackson County Courthouse. Our, courthouse, our courthouses across the state hold a very proud and dignified stature in our communities, but courthouse business both court and other county services can at times be adversarial and give rise to the fear of violence and even violence itself. Every courthouse employee and every courthouse visitor in this state deserves to feel safe and be safe. While While courthouse security is a problem involving both state and local governments, the judicial branch has joined hands with the Iowa State Association of Counties to take the necessary steps to make certain that every courthouse in Iowa is safer and more secure. We have completed surveys to determine the current level of, of security in each courthouse, and we have started to provide training to those who work in our courthouses and other state and county buildings. We will broaden our efforts and look forward to working with all segments of state and local government to make all public buildings safe. While the day of the Jackson County shooting was a tragedy, that was the day, that was the day when tragedy was turned into an unwavering commitment to do everything possible to make sure that every place of justice is a place of safety. <laughs> Finally, let me place the progress of the judicial branch in context. The progress in building a better court system is only accomplished with the help of the judges across this state. Judges who must also find the time each day to carefully decide the difficult and important issues that the people of Iowa bring into our courtrooms. The judges and magistrates of this state do this work with the honor and the conviction of the best judges that preceded them and with all the wisdom that we could ever hope would be found in a system of justice. It is these judges, my six colleagues on the Supreme Court, the judges of the Court of Appeals, and all the judges and magistrates of this state who are making this progress possible and the promise of justice for all inevitable. I have relied on only a handful of days to describe the progress the judicial branch has made over the last years to build a better court system. And I have turned to a few days to describe the work yet to be done. Fair and impartial justice for all is our fundamental mission, and it is what exists deep within each one of us. Everyone, everyone deserves to see the court process as fair and just even if some will not always see the justice in the results in the same time, in the same way. While each day may not reveal our progress to all, each day is our opportunity to bring justice to all Iowans through the work of our judges and our court staff. The architects, the architects of our grand government left it for those who would follow to be its builders, and its carpenters. The blueprints bestowed 
challenge us to innovate and inspire us to do our best. So, it is today that the judicial branch continues to build the system of justice envisioned by its architects to benefit all people so that one day, one day, that arc that bends towards justice and equality will be inscribed full circle to become but a point, a single point where we will all stand, a point seen and felt with the clarity of a carpenter. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.